Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. We are at the part of the book where the author, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, speaks about Al Kalam. And as we mentioned in the previous sitting, the author will speak about, or what he mentions here can be found in about, or can be summarized in about five main points. He's going to speak about the definition of speech, of kalam. Then he's going to speak about the smallest amount that something can be regarded as kalam or what it is made up of. Third thing he's going to talk about is the different types of words that are found in speech or kalam. Then he's going to talk about the kalam or al-kalam from the angle of it being having the possibility of being regarded as truth or falsehood and a khabr is split into khabr and insha and then he's going to talk about kalam from the angle of haqiqah and majaz inshallah ta'ala let's start and we'll probably get through some of that inshallah today not all of it the author begins and he mentions al kalam and he gives us the definition of kalam lughatan al lafz al mawdu' li ma'na it is the pronunciation or the statement that is put down or used for a meaning and istilahan technically he says al lafz al mufidu the pronunciation or the statement which brings fa'ida or is beneficial and we as you study in uh, nahw and other than that meaning that a person can keep silent after having said what he said so it's not necessarily that it must bring a new benefit it's not necessarily that it must bring a new benefit like for example Allahu Rabbuna Allah is our Lord wa Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Nabiyuna and Muhammad is our messenger or is our prophet then he goes on to mention wa aqallu ma yata'allafu minhu al-kalam isman and the smallest or the, yeah, the, the fewest thing that speech can be made up from is isman, two names, or ismun, wa, uh, fi'lun wa ismun, wasmun, fi'lun wasmun. It's either two isms or a fi'l and an ism. Mithad al-awwal, so an example of the two isms is Muhammadun Rasul, not Muhammadun Rasulullahi, Muhammadun Rasul. So Muhammad is one word and the second word is Rasul. ومثال الثاني استقام استقام محمد استقام محمد. So this is a fi'l استقام and then محمد would be the ism. So those uh, the smallest that speech can be made up of. Then he goes on to mention what speech the words the different categories of words that speech is made up from. وَوَاحِدُ الْكَلَامِ كَلِمَةِ And one component of kalam, or yeah, a unit, the smallest unit is a kalima. Not the smallest unit of one, but what, may, what kalam is made up of is a kalima. And it is a laft, it is a pronunciation which is put down for a specific meaning or for a meaning singular. And it's one. وَهِيَا إِمَّا إِسْمٌ أَوْ فِعْلٌ أَوْ حَرْفٌ So, as we've discussed in the other subjects, you're going to either have an ism or a fi'l or a harf. Anything which is regarded to kalam in the Arabic language, then any components, any words that is found within that kalam is either going to be ism or a fi'l or a harf. <coughs> or a harf. The author is going to break down each one. So he's going to mention ism, he's going to mention fi'l, and he's going to mention a harf. harf. And because this book is dealing with usul al-fiqh, He's going to discuss it from the angle of usul al-fiqh. He's not going to go into other aspects which are to do with other subjects. That's point number one. Point number two, because this book is a mukhtasar, it's a very short summarized book, he's not going to bring up all the details. Okay, But kalam is important for us to know because the speech of Allah and also the speech of the Prophet ﷺ are sources of evidences for us. So we need to be able to understand what he's made up of and what do the words within that speech, what do they point to, what do they indicate, so that we can derive the rulings. Likewise, it also is important because when people speak, then we're going to, if, if someone's a judge, he has to be able to understand what they are saying and the indications of the speech that they are using. So he starts with for al-ism. 
اسم أن ساز ما دل على معنى في نفسه من غير إشعار بزمن So here the definition is that which points to a meaning in itself That's one aspect of the definition here And the second aspect or the second part of it من غير من غير إشعار بزمن Without giving you any sense, any feeling with regards to the time frame so it does not indicate or give a sense of time. So that is the ism. It's that which points to meaning in and of itself and is not give you any sense, it does not give you any sense of time. Then he goes on to say, Wahua Thalatatu Anwa. And it is of three categories or three types. And he's gonna mention these three types, and these are important for Usul Fiqh. Al Awal Ma Yufidul Umum. You have words that are that come under the category of ism and they from from those words are those words that give you an indication of generality of umum that it is am okay and that that uh, he gives an example here kal asma al mawsula like the connective pronouns alladhi and so forth the second type under uh, under an ism, you have some words that indicate itlaq ma yufidul itlaq. There are words that indicate, and we benefit from them, unrestrictedness. Okay, what type of words? Like for example, kan fi siyaq al ithbat, like something that is uh, un. Uh, unrestricted, uh, Afwan, not unrestricted, uh, that is uh, unspecified in the context of affirmation. For example, let's give an example here. Like if you were to say, uh, give a student the prize. A student is not specified, is not the student, a student. Give the student a prize. So now we have Itlaq. We understand from it Itlaq. It is mutlaq. It's any student, anyone who fits the category of being a student, give him a prize. And it is different from being am. Am is that it covers every one of that category. Itlaq is that it is unrestricted to that category. And we'll discuss it. I mean, all of these will have their own chapters later on anyway. But Itlaq. Here would be as long as you give that prize to one of the students, you fulfilled that command. Okay. And then he goes on another the another category of uh, words under the title of ism. There are those that you feedu ma you feedu al khusus. There are some word types which we indicate uh, we benefit from them or it, they indicate to us al khusus a specific that it is specific كالأعلام, like the names like we have names for things if I say to you for example give this to Zaid and me and you both know who Zaid is we say give this to Zaid then he has specified Zaid it's not uh, give it to anyone there's a specific uh, person that we have specified by the using of his name so here the author has mentioned that words kalam is made up of word types Either ism, fi'l, or harf, and he's told us, okay, ism, what it is, and he's given us, okay, what are the, some of the indications of different types of words that come under ism? Then he goes on to mention the second type. He says, the second, he says, ba al fi'l, ma dalla ala ma'anun fi nafsi. So that's the first part of the definition. Wa ash'ara. بِهَيْئَتِهِ بِأَحَدِ الْأَزْمِنَةِ الثَّلَاثَةِ And gives you the feeling due to his to its hay'ah, to its form of one, بِأَحَد, of one of the three time frames. So let's look at the definition. مَا دَلَّ عَلَى مَعْنًا فِي نَفْسِهِ That which gives a meaning in uh, itself. This is similar to the ism. It's the same part of the definition, the same to the ism. But what's the difference? That by the very form of that word, it indicates you, it indicates to you, it gives you a sense of a time frame. The form here, meaning, like for example, if you say, 
كتب كتب by its form the pattern فعل indicates to you that there is a time frame in the past he wrote now if we were to say كاتب or كتاب there's no time frame that is connected to that word you don't sense a time frame by that word but if you put it on the pattern on the form كتب or يكتب then you that هيئة that form indicates to you that there is a time in, uh, involved like يكتب you say it's in the present or اكتب you say it's in the future write it's a command so due to its form okay if you say well that's still not clear to me we could say okay as opposed to form you could have a word that indicates that gives you a sense of time due to the actual word due to the actual meaning of that word itself like if you say morning the word morning in the morning or in the afternoon it does it gives you a sense of time but not because of the form of the word but because of the actual meaning of the word that's what the sheikh is excluding by that so there's a difference between something giving you a sense of time due to its hayah ah, due to its form or due to its actually meaning its madda so if you, if that went over your head don't worry too much about it but uh, the point being here wahua that there are three time frames when you have a word that has a meaning in and of itself it points to a meaning in and of itself and it uh, gives you an indication of one of the three times due to the pattern of that word then it is a fi'l okay and he says now he mentions to us these three times wahua imma madin it is either going to be in the past i the time frames or mudari in the present or it is going to be an amr it is going to be a command like ifham so fahima he understood yafham he understands ifham uh, understand then he mentions a statement here rahimahullah he says wal fi'lu bi aqsamihi the verb with its uh, categories yufidu al itlaq fala umuma lahu it indicates or gives you uh, itlaq an unrestricted thing but it does not have umum it, you cannot take that it's am so for example just brief in brief like for example if you say so and so zaid fasted zaid fasted sama yom al ithnain monday now you cannot take from this verb that he fasted that he done it every monday that he done it every monday uh, in of itself you don't take from the verb that there's going to be uh, generality but sometimes there are uh, accompany, accompanying evidences that point to something being general and so forth but in of itself the verb doesn't indicate that it's am so that's verb then he goes on to mention the third type of uh, word that makes up speech and he says al harf al harf ma dalla ala ma'nan fi ghayrihi and the harf is that which points to a meaning in other than it that which points to a meaning in other than it and he says here wa minhu wa minhu and from it i.e. from the this category of uh, word not all of it because again this is a mukhtasar it's a beginner's book it's an introductory book so he's going to give us some of them and uh, knowing the meanings of uh, the huruf, the the particles or um, prepositions and so forth is very important because many rules can be built upon it. So he says he's going to give us about four different uh, examples. So he says al wow, al wow, and I want you to pay attention, inshaAllah Taala, here because we're going to talk, we're going to talk about the function that it comes with, and we're going to talk about what do we understand from that function, what do we benefit from that function. So he says watati the wow. The letter wow sometimes comes atifatan as a letter of conjunction. فتفيد الاشتراك المتعاطفين في الحكم. So it gives us, we benefit from it. It indicates when it comes as a conjunction, as an atf, when the wow. Now he said the wow sometimes it comes as atf. Okay, when it comes as atf, what do we benefit? What do we understand? He says number one. So here put one, function number one, atifa. This is the function. Okay, what do we benefit? A, 
اي اشتراك المتعاطفين في الحكم that's one thing we benefit from it okay another thing that we need to know and keep in mind ولا تقتضي الترتيب ولا تنافيه and the letter wow this wow when it comes as a harf which is atf or the function of atf the second thing put b here you could say the second thing we benefit from is that it does not indicate sequence nor does it negate it so if i say to you jaa muhammadun wa aliyun muhammad came and ali the wow here is for the function of atf so it came atifa okay what do we benefit from knowing that it came atifa so we know from that that the word Zaid, the two things which were conjoined uh, in the sentence Ja'a Muhammadun wa Ali then the word Ali and the word Muhammad which are conjoined by the wow they both have the same thing which is what? that they partook in the coming so Muhammad came and also Ali came how do we know that Ali came? because of the wow that gave it atf they both have the same hukum so that's one of the benefits now what do we also learn from the wow being there we know that there is no indication of who came first there was no sequence there was no tartib based upon just the wow so if i say to you jaa muhammadun wa ali muhammad and ali came or muhammad came and ali there is no indication in of itself as to who came first it doesn't necessitate it when you use the wow there's no necessity to say it muhammad must have come first or ali came first and it does not negate it it could be or it could not be and the sheikh says here illa bi dalil uh, there's no indication it gives us the wow when it comes as atf it gives us no indication of sequence of who came first for example in the example given except maybe if there was a dalil if there was an external evidence or an evidence showing us another evidence showing us who came first second letter that uh, or second particle that the sheikh gives us al fa the letter fa now here wa ta'ti atifatan the fa can come num function 1 for the letter fa function 1 atifatan as a conjunction fa tufidu what do we benefit from it ishtiraq al mutaatifain fi al hukm that the two things that are conjoined by this fa they are uh, they both partake in the hukum. So if we say Ja'a Muhammadun Fa'aliyun Fa'ali Ja'a Muhammadun Fa'ali Came Muhammad Then or oh, Okay And Ali With the Fa So then both Ali and Muhammad take Both came yeah? That's similar to the Wow yeah? But now we have something new So this is now The Fa can come for the function of atifa put here function one ish and the benefit we learn alif or you can put a here that's one benefit ma tartib another benefit that we learn from the fa which is atifa you can put here b tartib so now when i say to you muhammad or jaa muhammadun wa ali fa ali not wa fa ali then we know that Muhammad and Ali came. They both done the same thing, the hukum. And what we know also because of the fa that Muhammad came first. Muhammad came first because of the fa. It indicates that there was a sequence. And what's the third? So put on top of the, the word tartib, put b. Okay, the second thing that we learn from this function. And the third thing, what tartib and that this sequence this order was straight after each other they were straight after each other so if i say to you jaa muhammadun fa ali muhammad or came muhammad then ali so that's the sequence the tartib that ali came after muhammad and we could also even say then straight away came muhammad uh, then straight away came ali where is this straight away where is how do we know that it was quickly after or straight after because of taqib because of the indication of taqib so this is you could put here on top of this c 
So when we when we hear when we see the fa and the function here is atifa, then we benefit these three things that it shares the hukam with the things that it's conjoined with, and there is a sequence, and that it's one after the other. And this is normally in the hadith when people want to tell uh, the congregation in the masjids that the people should follow the imam. And they mention the hadith that when the imam goes into, into ruku' فَرُكَعُوا Then make ruku' the fahia, i.e. do it after him, there's a sequence, and it should be done quickly after him. It shouldn't be that the imam is gone into the next rukun or the next part of the salah and you're still not following. So that it shows uh, that it should be he should be followed quickly, uh, I without delay. Now the sheikh says watati and it also comes. What comes the fa? So another function watati sababiyah uh, and it comes sababiyah. So the letter fa can also come to indicate uh, a reason for something. فَتُفِيدُ التَّعْلِيلِ So it gives an indication of a, a reason for something. So sometimes you will see that the fa comes to give an indication. So this would be function number two. So function one is that it comes as atifa. Function two that it comes as a sabab. And when it comes as a sabab, what do we benefit from that? We benefit that this is a ta'lil, this is the reason, this is the illa behind something. This is the reason behind a specific ruling or specific thing that Allah has mentioned. Thirdly, the author goes on to tell us, and uh, the author goes on to tell us, now this is another harf, Al-Lam uh, Al-Jarrah, the lamb which causes jar. Walaha Ma'anin, it has, this lamb that comes with this purpose, has Ma'anin, has many meanings. Minha, from the meanings that it has, at ta'lil number one. Put here number one. This is the function that it has, that it gives the reason for something. Number two, at tamlik that it can give us indication of something being owned. Number three, al ibaha, al ibaha, that it can give us indication. Of something being uh, allowed, like if if you say, for example, the Sheikh gives us some examples, like he says, "Ahbab to Zaydan li imanihi." This is for the purpose, ta'lil. I loved Zayd. Here, yeah? I loved Zayd because of his iman, li imanihi. Or you can say, "Hada al mal leka." This money is for you, or this wealth, leka, for you. I, it will belong to you, it is your tamlik. Uh, or it can come to show that something is permissible. And lil insan, for man, for people, is that he may pray the nafal salah <coughs> sitting. Even if he has the ability. So the point being here that Lam Al Lam Al Jarrah has different meanings, and he gives us some of them. Now this here, uh, this discussion of the harf, the meanings of the harf, is very important because uh, if you have a difference, if you understand differently what the meanings of some of the harf, uh, the prepositions, and so forth are then the rulings can also differ. So the scholars discuss this in details in different books or in advanced books of Usul Fiqh. Uh, the fourth one, the author, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, gives us Ala, Ala al jar Ala, which causes Jar. Walaha, and it has Ma'anin, many meanings. It has different meanings. Minha, from the meanings, Al-Wujub. Al-Wujub. And it has many meanings from them. Al wujub. I when you have Allah, sometimes you this is indicative of obligation. This is indicative of obligation. Like when you say Allahi uh, Allah Nasi, 
على الناس upon mankind is to do such and such okay this is indicative of an obligation so this is the part now the author rahimahullah ta'ala has mentioned thus far so we've covered what speech is uh, a brief look at what speech is what's the smallest amount that speech can be made up of kalam and um, we looked at the fact that anything which is kalam the words that are found in it are, are not going to go out of three types of words either ism fi'l or a harf and for each one of those there are certain aspects of usul fiqh that are involved so in, with regards to the uh, those words that come under the title of ism then there are some that indicate uh, umum some of them that indicate itlaq some of them that indicate khusus and then we spoke about fi'l the different time frames and then we spoke about <coughs> the harf that there are many different uh, words or particles that uh, come under this and they indicate different meanings next time inshallah ta'ala we're going to look at the different types of speech inshallah or speech from the angle of bi'tibari imkani wasfihi bi sidqi wa adamihi and i.e. from whether it is khabr or insha and then after that whether it is haqiqah or majaz wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in